uh, it's important because we learn a lot, and I think this is an opportunity to apply uh, the, the things I, we learn it here in Brazil and develop our own legislation to try to solve our problems, learning how you and solutions are dealing with your problems. So this is very important to us. Well, it's effect-based monitoring. We are, have been using this in Brazil uh, for s some assays, and what we learned here proved to us that this can be applicable. So now, with the knowledge we got, we will be able to use it in a very applied way. You know, because the project focuses on rivers, and there are rivers all over the world, including the, the United States, I think a lot of the findings that come out of the solutions project can be applicable to the rivering systems in the United States. So I think it's just a project that has a lot of potential and is something that's very applicable in every place, including the United States. And as we see the presentations um, at this session, uh, the mixtures, I think that's really, you know, the work you guys have done on mixtures is really very interesting and I think something that the Office of Water um, back in the United States will be interested in. Um, you know, as I mentioned yesterday in the stakeholder meeting, um, I think there's a lot of interest in being able to prioritize pollutants and figure out which ones we should focus our criteria de development on. I joined this project five years ago and can also have uh, followed the very uh, important amount of work. And it was also a very challenging project to meet the European uh, strategy for a non-toxic aquatic environment. Uh, my main, uh, how to say, my main uh, impression, if I can say, it's the, the, the gathering about uh, 40 uh, expert uh, partners and uh, joining their uh, common efforts on a perspective to a better challenge the monitoring strategies, modeling strategies and abatement strategies to help the water sector, uh, whatever the water industry, water operators or water agencies, uh, to better consider the cutting edge science and to plug them and to assess them uh, in a way of a more uh, holistic approach to uh, ensure this challenge of the CECs in the water bodies. From the water uh, sector perspective, uh, the, the progress that has been provided by the pro project is now completely recognized and very promising. I think solutions will indicate the direction um, for monitoring of surface water for the 2020 years. We are also active in developing um, effect-based monitoring methods and strategies, for example with our um, research activities in UBA and together with our partners. And we followed so the solutions project very intensively. We were part of the stakeholder board. And now we are open to transfer the, the results of solutions into the regulatory framework and um, to bring it, to make it active, to make it work. I think a solution project is really important for the, uh, for the contribution to the revision of the Water Framework Directive. We have seen this morning that uh, uh, the activities that we are doing now in the Water Framework Directive for effort-based methods uh, are really in parallel with the work that has been done with the solution during these five years. So the need to include uh, uh, effort-based methods to take into account the risk from emerging substances and mixtures, this is an important uh, uh, problem for the classification and assessment of surface water bodies in Europe. I think we as a consortium achieved a lot. Uh, we really worked out more this concept of solution-based risk assessment. We both looked at the, the different options we have in the chemical life cycle to reduce emissions from uh, legislation, authorization, uh, use phase, very important, and the difference in use between professional uses, non-professional uses. We also looked uh, how to couple the life cycle of these chemicals 
to the water cycle. Um, we uh, made assessments about efficient placements if you choose for, for technical options. So which are the most influencing uh, point sources related to susceptible uses of uh, the water cycle, such as drinking water production or recreation. Um, and we also looked and we also made a database, a large database on removal efficiencies for chemicals of emerging concerns by various water treatment techniques, basically treatment techniques based on sorption processes, based on oxidation processes or based on membrane processes. The product of the project is a whole package of science and technology that will help to improve the water quality here in the European rivers, but also help, help to provide solutions for the developing country like China. And China right now is in the middle of uh, uh, developing ecological civilizations, which is to uh, have a sustainable development of economy and uh, and, and the society. What we have achieved here will be very useful uh, for, for, for that as well. So we're interested in the chemical pollution in solutions, but we can't possibly measure all the chemicals that are present in the environment. And therefore, we took effect-based tools, or effect-based methods, to monitoring mi mixture effects. And we um, choose two types of um, effect-based tools for used in vivo assays that are really low complexity, like algae, daphnia, or fish embryos. They're all considered legally in vitro assays um, to assess the acute toxicity. And then we also complemented that with so-called reporter gene assays, cellular assays, where we could um, mimic chronic effects with a test that takes very short time, to, um, um, will only last for 24 hours, but gives us indication of the hazard um, from effects that would usually only show up when you have chronic long-term exposure. I mean, there are different aspects why um, solutions was uh, helpful for my PhD project. And the one thing is that it uh, enabled me to work in a team and uh, get support from different uh, people on the project. And the other part is also from a content that it uh, allowed me to put my own project into a bigger perspective. What my project was about um, was uh, molecular analysis uh, in the zebrafish embryo. And our specific question was um, if we can use transcriptome analysis to get uh, non-target biological information about chemical pollution. One of the key activity where the solutions really uh, supported is a joint and survey. The joint and survey, which is a unique uh, expedition uh, every six years, ICP is organizing to, to, inf to collect information on the water quality. And thanks to the solutions, we, we were able to apply novel uh, technologies and approaches and to narrow the knowledge gaps on chemicals. This is one very important input for the solutions in, in terms of the, uh, the joint and survey three. But this is not only for the science. It's very important it has a policy making level, a water management level, because uh, based on the results of the, of the joint annual survey and the investigations of the solutions, we would be able to um, develop a, the Daniel uh, specific pollutants, an update of this list, which is very important. And therefore, this is very uh, important because of the policy making, this list has been in incorporated into the Daniel River Basin Management Plan, which is a key document for the Daniel River Basin. So besides the scientific results, there is an uh, aspect for the policy making, and this is highly appreciated. We want to learn from the solutions project, and then I want to 
give my experience here and transfer what I get from the solution to uh, Japanese people and Japanese researcher, and then we uh, we try to make such a good collaborate, a good consortium uh, for the good environment. It is a good idea to uh, to combine and integrate it, and then uh, we can we can share and we can use these data. So this is good idea. So I mean. The results coming from the solutions projects can really provide very good contributions to improve protection for European water. So the main step now is needed is to share this knowledge with the policy makers in Brussels but also at the national level in the different countries so that your research results can actually make a really good contribution in future measures. We need to move forward in controlling chemicals better at the source, but also need to discuss more about priority chemicals, emerging mixtures, and how we are tackling the combination effects. Well, first of all, science has to organize available knowledge. And in these days, that is with sort of the large amount of data that becomes available through all sorts of initiatives, to make knowledge out of the massive information. And that is uh, sort of assess monitoring data and, and give strategi strategic answers to water managers, where is risk, where is no risk. That needs to be, of course, advanced. And for advancements, you need development of tools. That is, on the chemical analytical sides, we foresee that uh, non-targeted analysis, that is, analysis for compounds that we do not know yet, need sort of technical advancement, but again, also evaluation strategies to come up with the compounds that really matter. And then, of course, uh, science has to play a role in thinking outside the box. And I think the real future need for water quality consideration is uh, to bring together water quality consideration with food production, with energy security, uh, to resolve sort of uh, apparently conflicting goals that we have in society. Uh, really amazing work going on here, bringing together multiple universities, stakeholders into this five-year program. And uh, look, looking at what is being done here, I would like to bring together similar universities and stakeholders back in India, particularly highlighting uh, the ecotoxicology effects, the micropollutant effects, and in some way, even the, the regulators, if they can bring, uh, if I can take this message back to the regulators to make some policy level changes in India, I think that will be a really great thing to do. So thank you for inviting me to the conference. <laughs>